Lord Jesus officers, um, visiting friends, Pastor um, Shirley Bryan, Sister Maynard, Sister Roma Grieve, and also um, Uzo, the Chief Executive Officer of Race Council Cymru. She's also a lawyer. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and um, Len Loris, our Windrush Elder. Yeah. We give thanks to one and all, and all the saints and all the visiting friends and children, Kamala, her two lovely children. Yeah. We greet you all in the mighty name of Jesus. And our organist, praise God. Praise. And um, I'm just here today just to read this poem because God used to give me poems um, early in the morning. And this one was written in 2007, the 29th of August. Praise the Lord. Wouldn't you like to go to heaven? The place where angels, jasper and gold possess. The great place, place of eternal rest. It's a place where God's people will be caught up to meet our bridegroom in the air. When all your earthly chores and com are complete, no more to be tempted by the evil one, where the Lord will receive you with a heavenly song. No more fighting, sickness or sighing, tolls or bills to pay or resting of unrest. Just to reign with him in glory and receive his eternal bless. Be strong, beloved, and unmovable. Keep your focus on Jesus and be true. For our Father waits in glory to give to, to us our reward and eternal crown. Ye powerful sons of the Most High God, a royal priesthood of his throne, who are all warriors of the kingdom and sojourners of the land, where you can boast in your efforts for the souls he has revived and restored through your spiritual labor here on planet Earth. So seek him more earnestly, pray without ceasing, Hold on to your faith and on to him fast until your breaking of the day comes forth. May your focus on me, beloved ones, never be detached, but be steadfast and unmovable so you can continuously be attached to your Savior's breast and vine until you're caught up to meet him in the heaven, the beginning of your eternal joy, peace, happiness, and everlasting rest in him. Just reign with your Savior in glory forever and evermore. Be encouraged, my people, be patient in well-doing, and always attentive to my word of life and truth. It is just little while from now, when your great need will be fulfilled, satisfied and accomplished, and never, never, ever more for you to wait or to roam. Make heaven the greatest need of your life. Bless the name of the Lord, your King Jesus, forever and ever more. Amen. God bless you and welcome to the online homegoing service of our dear uh, missionary Angela May Barnes, otherwise known to some locals as Mama Barnes. Today we give God thanks for his comfort and his care. We thank the Lord for being with us. This, of course, is a service that follows uh, the interment which took place earlier, and uh, we want to continue to celebrate her life. So this is a rejoicing, this is a celebration of a life that was well lived, a life that was committed to God and to God's people and to the community. And so today, please join us in celebrating and thanking God Amen for her commitment and her contribution to the church and to wider society. Today it's my privilege as her pastor, amen, to pay tribute to her contribution to our local church in Cardiff, South Wales. Uh, and we th I thank God for her uh, contribution, or her dedication and commitment to the ministry. Uh, she was a fervent worker, a prayer warrior, a worshipper amongst other things, and she really was a blessing to us all. Today, we pay tribute to her life, and we thank God, amen, also for her family, uh, to Deacon Barnes, Deacon Clarence Barnes, her husband, to uh, Sister Anika Nation Reed, amen, her daughter, and to uh, her grandson, Christopher Nation. We extend our deepest condolences to you, to the family, and to the wider family. 
and we pray that God will comfort you at this difficult time. And whilst uh, she's not with us physically, we believe she's safe in the arms of Jesus. Our Lord and Saviour declared to us in his word in John, the Gospel of John chapter 14, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. Hallelujah. I've gone to prepare a place for you, that where I am, there you may be also. This uh, online homegoing service uh, will be followed up uh, with a memorial service at some time in the future, uh, God willing, uh, and where we will once again reflect upon uh, not only Missionary Barnes, but other loved ones uh, who have passed during this period. Once again, we thank God for each and every one of you that are participating and those of you that are watching. Uh, please uh, sit back and enjoy uh, a life that was lived to the full, a life that was dedicated to God, and a life, amen, that was dedicated to her family and to the community. We thank God for her today, and we pray for the family once again. May God bless you in Jesus' name. Missionary Angela Mae Barnes, also known to those who loved her in the Cardiff community as Mama Barnes, was born to Lolita McKenzie, a homemaker, and Lionel uh, Nation, a chef in the Royal Navy the, in Kingston, Jamaica, on the 19th of November 1956. She spent her childhood being raised by her aunt and uncle in King's House and would tell of how she recalled seeing her uncle chauffeur the Queen in and out of the gates as it was his job to drive the Queen and Duke around the island when they visit. As a teenager, Missionary Barnes came to Britain with her brother Frederick Nation to live with uh, their father, leaving behind the three other siblings, Utel, Janet and Errol, with her mum. Missionary Barnes recalls her deep sorrow at leaving her mother, who explained to Missionary Barnes that she wanted her two youngest children to experience a better way of life. Missionary Barnes would commence her education in Fitzalan High School, where she excelled in the subject of mathematics, so much so that her teacher recommended to her father that she would become an accountant. Mr. Barnes, however, had other ideas for his daughter and wished for her to progress as a chef entrepreneur in the family business, uh, which was an eatery and hosted domino nights and fed the homeless with Jamaican style Irish stew. At 21 years of age, Missionary Barnes almost died in childbirth and had to receive an emergency operation to deliver her three month premature baby, Anika Nation Reed, who she shared with Michael Reed, a interior decorative designer. Mother Barnes, having painful complications, was extremely fatigued with low iron levels. But God intervened and the vessel he would use was a Jamaican midwife, a Christian woman of faith called Gloria. She bravely advised the senior doctors that she believed Mother Barnes to be showing symptoms of a rare genetic blood disorder called sickle cell anemia. Following the birth of her daughter, Mother Barnes did not delay in returning to work but had aspirations and career goals that far exceeding, exceeded uh, being a cashier at Little Woods Pools. She would embark on a career in computing, uh, tutoring whilst working part-time and taking care of her daughter. She commenced further education and volunteered with the Citizens Advice. This opened up another avenue of administration work at Cardiff, The Vale and University Hospital, Wales. Here, a, she also worked uh, as a shift domestic worker to make ends meet. Her daughter, Anika, recalls her uh, sitting in the corridors 
recalls sitting in the corridors of the hospital watching her mum clean while simultaneously quizzing her on her homework and reminding her always to consider others when using WC facilities. As it was no shame in cleaning up the lavatory, but there is shame in leaving it unfit for someone else to use. Having worked hard enough to save for a holiday to Jamaica, both Mother Barnes and Anika would visit a church in Minster, Jamaica, where a dashing young usher called Clarence Barnes would assist them to their seats. Anika, completely mesmerized by his red coat as it reminded her of a favorite TV program she'd watched, uh, was also drawn to him because he looked kind. Mother Barnes patted her hair in, her pla in place under her hat and walked with Anika to ask for the ladies. Daddy Barnes signaling to her the location with his hand, giving a gentle smile with his eyes. This was enough to make Mother Barnes blush and as she walked away with Anika, following directions uh, with her head in the clouds, she tripped. Anika holding her mom's hand helped her steady, helped her st to steady her as she would fall head over heels otherwise. Mother Barnes gracefully steadied herself uh, and said in the Jamaican accent, Nika, I'm still a look. While uh, she did this, her daughter looked round, still watching Mother Barnes with a pleasant smile, and Nika responded uh, with a giggle and a nod. Hmm, embarrassed, Mother Barnes said. Oh, come on, Anika, and hurried with her daughter to the ladies' room. Later on, they would walk the hilly terrain for the church meal and everyone would be seated under the canopies and road tables being served the best tasting Caribbean cuisine it was end up Daddy Barnes would serve Mother Barnes and Anika their dish. Mother Barnes tasted the delightful dish and no doubt this reminded her of her father and she was impressed but when she heard Daddy Barnes pray with a mighty roar she, she knew that she had met the man that she'd love until the day she would die. And the rest, they say, is history. On her return to Britain, now working with Dr. Bernardo's, and while still studying, she worked with disabled children with an organization called Multicultural Crossroads. Determined to facilitate the emigration of Daddy Barnes to the UK, she worked to facilitate this. Uh, this led to other opportunities with mentoring for all uh, to isolated, excluded young people. She was a computer tutor to Bain uh, to help uh, members of the community in Wales who struggled with language and cultural age barriers. No more dying there, we are going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we are going to see the King. Should there be any rivers we must cross? Should there be any mountains we must climb? Till we reach the other side We have come from every nation God knows each of us by name Cleanse us with his blood To redeem everyone that's gone astray Yes, there are some of us Who have laid down our lives But we all shall live again on the earth Hallelujah. Soon and very soon 
We are going to see the king soon and very soon. We are going to see the king soon and very soon. We are going to see the king. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We are going to see the king soon and very soon. We are going to see the king soon and very soon. We are going to see the king soon and very soon. We are going to see the king. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We are going to see the king. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The reading today will be from Isaiah chapter 53. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant. And as a root out of a dry ground, he hath no form, nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes, we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb. So he openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? for he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people was he stricken, and he was made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, because he had no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He shall put him to grief when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied by his knowledge. Shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. That ends the reading of the God's word. We bless in Jesus' name. Hey guys, my name is Ify Wobi. I'm a classical contemporary pianist and I'm so honoured to be able to play in honour of Mama Barnes. Mama Barnes was such a wonderful person, ray of light, and she was the best and she deserves the best. So I composed a piano piece in memory of her. It is called Mama B's Summer Skies. Hope you enjoy. <laughs> Thank you. 
thank you so much, Mom and Barnes. We love you. You're the best. Hello, my name is Uzo Iwobi and I got to know Mama Barnes. Um, I think I gave her that name, Mama B. Um, when she was um, supporting me, Anika herself and CJ um, supported me to set up the Black History Month uh, program. After we picked it up as race council, I had no, um, no close relatives or close ties in Cardiff at the time, just good friends. And when I met uh, Mama Barnes and Anika, it was incredible how much love and support she gave me. We became fast friends. We met at the Wales Millennium Center and they began to help me practically to work on black history. So she um, uh, has been such a blessing and a support and when we set up the Windrush Camry Elders, she became the vice chair. And so my work with Mama Barnes continued to grow, continued to develop. And um, yeah, we've been so close. She's spoken at so many events that I've organized, the Windrush events, the Windrush celebration days, um, the uh, Valentine's Day for Windrush um, Elders, and the um, Black History events in St. Fagans and right across Wales in the Senev and the Pierhead. Um, she's just full of life. The wonderful memories I have of Mama Barnes is having the speech where she, um, at every event she does a speech as the vice chair and she will always sing a song even if we ask her not to sing and her songs are so long that actually we just think, oh my gosh, Mama Barnes, don't make it too long. And she loves giving a speech, absolutely loves it. And um, we will miss her sunshine and her love for the Lord and her prayers, her prayers for me as an individual and all the love she surrounded me with. And the fact she said to me, no matter how bad it gets, God is with you. She was a solid encourager, a prayer warrior who saw good in everybody. And on the very, very, very last uh, message, she was sending me messages about um, some challenges she was having. And I remembered encouraging her um, that God is on the throne and God will look after her. And she just said to me, as a look after Anika and Christopher. And by God's grace, we will continue to support each other. We love you, Mama Barnes. I know that you're singing in heaven and taking over, organizing the kitchen and cooking all these jerk chickens. Uh, from Jamaica speaking Patois with the Lord. So we love you. Sleep tight until we meet again. God bless. Bye. Jesus, so I believe in his love. I, I, I believe he's God. Jesus is alive. And life is Jesus. Thank you. All the year round. Thank you. People who believe in Jesus are the happiest people I love to me. So clap those hands. Stop those Oh, shake those tambourines. So this is dedicated to Jesus. Uh, pleasant good afternoon. My name is Janice Barnes. I'm the niece of Angela Barnes and Brother Barnes. Um, Auntie, as I called her, owes many title. Um, she was a mother a daughter, a sister, a friend, auntie, cousin, you name it. Auntie owes all of that. She was an amazing person. I lived with her for a few years and I can tell you there was never a dull moment with her. She's always in the house singing. Everywhere I go with her, she's always dancing. I would say, Auntie, yeah, embarrass me. And she would always say, No, I'm not. But um, to know the true um, Angela Barnes, to me, you'd have to live with her. Seeing her at church or at social events, you're just getting 
the surface of her. You know, you're not really getting the full deal. Um, anyone that knows her knows she's a lover for rice and peas and oxtail. I've never seen somebody that loves oxtail more than me, like Auntie. She loves pigtail, chicken foot. She's all Jamaican. I know she was actually born there, but when I'm telling you that she's a dirty Jamaican, that lady is not just Jamaican by nationality. She's like the whole country. Honestly, she was like the whole country. That lady loved Jamaica more than anything. She was an amazing, as I said, she was an amazing person. She was a phenomenal woman. Um, she loves God. Um, she was so compassionate. You know, she had this yearning, this desire, you know, to, 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 to be, um, what would I say? She just have this. She just have this extraordinary thing about her when it comes out to God. It's like you could see a light shining through the way, you know, she adores and loves God and speak about God. You know, I know um, when I came up from Jamaica, I wasn't a church goer, and Auntie made sure I knew who God was and how He works. You know, and I told her thanks many times. I just wish I had the opportunity to say it once more to her. And I can honestly say, if it wasn't for her, I would be the mother I am. I would be the, the young female I am today if it wasn't for that lady. You know, she molded me, she scolded me. I didn't like the scolding part, you know. But I thank God that I had the opportunity. I had the chance to have met her, um, that she was in my life. And she still is, you know, not because she had gone on to the Lord. That doesn't mean that she's not here. She's still here. Um, I can tell you, going out on the road with Auntie, you can never die of hunger. That lady will feed you till you're big as a mother cow. She's the one that introduced me to Chinese food. And ever since that day until now, I am stuck. I am stuck on Chinese food. It's my breathing, living food. <laughs> she hear me say that. She will go. Oh, Dozy Doris. Yes, that's another thing about her. She likes giving um, names that it's not on your birth paper. And you can testify to that because we were like sisters and she called me Dozy Daisy and Anika was Dozy Doris. We hated it, but that was Auntie's name for us. So we just rolled with the program like Jamaicans would say. I don't want no one to forget her. I want her memory to live on. As I said, there are so many things about that lady that I can speak about, but there isn't enough time. You know, I remember going um, grocery shopping with her and we'd be in the supermarket for hours. Madman, you gotta look when you rip it.
for me. Good afternoon, one and all, and what a beautiful day to have this memorial for Angela. The last time I saw Angela was in February, and as I walked into the hospital, she was sat on the bed, and for a little more privacy, she asked that we walk down to the patient meeting room. As we entered, there were three people sitting down, and one was waiting for medication since early afternoon so that she could be discharged. So our com uh, conversation was around that. We couldn't really talk much between ourselves, so I engaged with the three elderly people and talked about life in general. It was a windy evening and the wind was just gushing around the building. Why do we always end up talking about the weather? Anyway, around 5.30pm they left. We started to talk and she said some things to me which lay heavily on her heart. And one thing that was outstanding to me that I'll remember was she was getting herself right. Angela was preparing herself and she said it matter of factly as she lay her chin on the stick she had in her hand and said, I have to sort myself out and be right. Philippians 1 verse 23 to 24 states, for I am hard pressed between the two, having a desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to remain in the flesh is more needful for you. Angela's whole concern was regarding Anika. It was always about Anika and her re recommitment to the Lord in sustaining that. Her love for her daughter was more than obvious. What joy it gave her to see Anika rededicate her life back to Christ and live in for the Lord. She wanted to stay here for the sake of her family, but at the same time was preparing herself to meet God. Preparing to meet your maker may sound like doomsday for most people. It is nothing they ever consider in life until they're just living life to the full. Jesus emphasized that we needed to be prepared and told a parable to this effect. In the gospel lesson, Jesus tells a story that emphasizes the need to be prepared at all times to meet our God. But I'll put a different slant on it. One Saturday, a wedding was being held in one town, but the, but the reception was 60 miles away in another town. After the wedding, professional photop photographers held sway so everyone except the wedding party went ahead to the hall. There were five bridesmaids and five groomsmen, counting the best man and maid of honour. When the photography was finished, the bride and groom rode with the best man and maid of honour. Two groomsmen and two bridesmaids rode in one car and the other four followed behind in a third car. The people in the third car had not thought ahead about the distance as they ran out of petrol on the way. The engine stalled when they were between towns, so it took quite a while to find petrol and finally arrive at the reception. When they arrived, the hotel doorman asked them for their invitations. They said they didn't have any because they were in the wedding party. He laughed and said, right, and I'm the groom. The wedding party arrived over an hour ago. With that, he shut the door and walked away. The four of them missed out on the party because they had not prepared by filling the petrol tank in advance. If you haven't guessed it, the parable is about the foolish and wise bridesmaids taken from Matthew 25 verses 1 to 5, who either did or did not bring enough oil for their lamps. The reason to be prepared is that if you are not, you will miss out on the great wedding feast that will take place. In Jesus's parable, the bridegroom came at an unexpected time. The lesson concludes, you know neither the day nor the hour. I can assure you, as we were in the waiting room, I never expected that it would be the last time I would see Angela. 
We had talked and texted in between, but I never thought it would be the actual last time I would see her. We are never prepared for the unexpected. If we expect something, we get prepared. Five bridesmaids thought the groom might come late, so they brought extra oil. They expected him. They just didn't know when. If he came early, they were prepared. If he came late, they were still prepared. Jesus is coming. While on an expedition to the Antarctic, Sir Ernest Shackleton left some men to explore Elephant Island while he and the rest went on. By the time he returned to pick them up, the sea had frozen over. Three attempts were made to reach them ended in failure, but eventually found a na narrow channel through the ice and made it to the island. He was delighted to find that they were not only alive and well, but all prepared to get abroad. After they were all safely on their way home, Shackleton asked about them their being entirely ready to board when he arrived. They told him that every morning their leader rolled up his sleeping bag and said, Get your things ready, boys. The boss may come today. Jesus is coming. The Bible says, make your calling an election sure, because we neither know the day or the hour. Every journey takes preparation. If we're going on a trip abroad, we are careful of what we are putting in our suitcase and ensure we have everything we need. We give ourselves ample time to reach the airport, and most important of all, we make sure we have a valid passport. We are living in an era of uncertainty, and if there ever was a time to review ourselves and the need to review ourselves, it's now. 2 Corinthians 6 verse 2 says, Now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Angela prepared herself to be with Christ. So the question is, have you? God bless in Jesus' name. Yes, my soul says yes. Um, I would like to say that um, Angela Barnes, this is for you, a tribute to you. We miss you, we love you, and we're really, really sad that you're gone. But you'll never be forgotten. I've known Angela for over 25, 25 years and every time we meet we're always laughing and joking but always as well encouraging each other with the word of God, always encouraging and building you up. You know what, she was so kind, she'd you know think about you and give you some a card with a mini in it or she'd you know um, give the twins something or a little gift or a little present. She'd always keep us in her heart and I will always keep her now in mind and although she had this awful awful disorder sickle cell her last days not to be spent in hospital not to be cared for she needed to be cared for a little bit better than she was and I just feel that if she was on a different ward a ward that was suitable for her maybe we wouldn't be where we are today. Angela was on a ward that the nurses didn't know how to care for her. They didn't know how to um, support her. And I just thank God that I was able to just in the two, maybe two, three weeks before she passed, I visited, visited her in the hospital and I was able to support her just a little bit in whatever capacity I could to support her in getting things that she needed. Um, because she, you know, she just felt that she wasn't being cared for enough. They didn't know enough about her, her illness. And we need to be more vigilant with our loved ones with this condition. Sickle cell is debil debilitating. It's, it's crucial that we get the care that is needed for the sufferers. And I just feel towards the end that the care was not there. But you know what, Angela? 
we love you. I'm so glad that I got the time to spend that time with you in hospital. And Anika and Christopher, you were their world. And you know what? You'll always be with us in our hearts. I look at the photos and I look back and see your beautiful face. And you know what? You're in no more pain now, my darling. No more pain. And we love you. And rest in peace, my love. Greetings everyone, my name is Bishop Dexter Edmund and on behalf of my wife, uh, Lady Yolanda Edmund, our family, uh, Dexter Jr., uh, Daniel and Deanne and the entire Bethel 
church here in Bristol. Uh, we want to extend to Deacon Barnes and Anika and the entire family our heartfelt condolences at the passing of our dear sister, uh, missionary Angela Barnes. And I use the word sister, I don't use it lightly. Uh, sister Angela was a sister to us, a part of our family, and someone who we absolutely are going to miss. Uh, my memory is a very simple but yet profound one. On the first Sunday in March, we assembled in Gloucester for the Thanksgiving service of Pastor and Mother Witter. And as it was not unusual for Sister Angela to be there because she was faithful and did her best to attend everything uh, that happened in the Southwest District and in the National Church. And that evening, uh, Missionary Barnes was sat on the front row of the church. And when the service ended, I was in somewhat of a hurry uh, to get back in the car and to get home. And I was on my way to pass her. And something said to me, just take a moment and shake her hand. And I did that. And it was not long after that, that we heard the news that she had gone home to be with the Lord. And so I'm forever grateful that I listened to the voice of the Spirit to shake her hand for the last time. You know, when you lose a loved one, as many of us have experienced, it leaves a hole that really is unfillable. Uh, so I want to say to the family, our prayers are with you. And to those that are watching, I'm encouraging you to learn everything that you can about sickle cell anemia. And not just be a blood donor, but if necessary and if needful, be a recipient of the blood that is so precious and donated by others. Sister Angela was a, a champion she did not allow uh, sickle cell to stop her, to hold her back, especially in her faith. She was vibrant, she was faithful, and she loved the Lord, and she loved her family. So again, on behalf of my wife and our entire family in the church and the national church, we send our condolences to you, but we will always honor the memory of our dear sister, Missionary Angela Barnes. God bless you. <laughs>
tonight. The Satan couldn't hold us down anymore. For the blood of Jesus is upon us. The blood of Jesus surrounds us. The blood of Jesus will keep us. The blood of Jesus will sustain us. The blood of Jesus will cleanse us and keep us of God. For when you appear in the air, we will be ready, of God, to meet you. In the name of Jesus, with your host of angels. Hear not so cry, of God. Let your warrior angels break down every stronghold in this place. In the name of Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. As we exalt your holy name. Remember our families, Lord. Oh, God, we say, remember those who perform surgeries, Lord God, the doctors. Remember the police force, Lord. Remember the homeless, Lord. Remember those that are starving, Lord, throughout the world. Remember them in your mercy, Lord, the firemen, Lord. Those are, oh God, my Savior's son. Oh God, my Savior, to help others. Oh God, and some of them even die in action. But Father God, my Savior, we serve a creator who cares for us, oh God. And we ask this morning that you take full control and anoint the preacher, I pray. Hear and answer and cry in the name of Jesus as we lift you up and give you thanks as we all say, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Sounded sweeter all the time. Since I met Jesus, he's always on the line. Someday I'll leave this world behind. For heaven sounded sweeter all the time. Heaven sounded sweeter all the time. Since I met Jesus, he's always on the line. Someday I'll leave this world behind. For heaven sounded sweeter all the time oh thank you jesus thank you lord thank you